Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. This is episode 17 today. I've been doing this for two weeks. Uh, this is the latest start time that I've ever had. It's midday today here in Hawaii. It's almost 12 o'clock. That means uh, game one of the NBA finals is be- going to be coming on in a couple hours here. Basketball games come on early in Hawaii and they end when the sun is still out. Uh, so the days here really start a lot earlier because the sun all, even comes out earlier here too. And it ends a lot earlier. Rush hour in Hawaii is like three to four. And uh, in the in mornings, the sun comes out as early as 4.50 a.m. You'll start seeing the sun peak out. So in Hawaii, the day starts a lot and it's, it's an interesting uh, perspective to have on sports. So I've been doing this podcast for two weeks. The Mr. G podcast is available at Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcast, and anywhere else that you get your podcast. I, episode, I upload the full episodes of the Mr. G podcast on Twitter and on YouTube, uh, where you can see and hear the Mr. G podcast. So we're going to talk about game one of the NBA finals in a second here. Uh, but first off, I want to uh, say memoriam for my sweet cat that I lost. I spent today burying a cat um, up in the mountains, uh, this w- uh, wooded area in Hawaii. It's quite far away from town. I live in the city area, as you can probably tell from my cat feeding videos. But um, I have a little grave set up on the outskirts of the island uh, where not many people go to. And um, unfortunately, with my cat feeding operation, uh, it goes with the territory. And uh, I have to, um, un- I've been out there a few times, but um, it's a nice area with birds. And it was nice giving her a proper burial. I'll make a video of it on my other TikTok page. Uh, Heidi was a great cat. She was a torty cat. Um, other feeders knew about her just because she was such a stunning cat. Uh, she had black and orange fur, but then she had a white streak that went down her belly and that went down her face and made it look like she had a little mustache and goatee. Uh, she also had these big, beautiful eyes that kind of looked like they had eyelashes, which added to her uh, mystique. Uh, I know of a feeder that fed her for about 10 years, and she was one of uh, uh, the feeder's favorite cats. And Heidi didn't get along with other cats very well, but she loved her human, whoever her human was. Like I said, she spent at least 10 years on the street. And when I met her a few years ago, I noticed she had been losing her eyes, uh, her vision from cataracts uh, in the Hawaiian sun. The cats uh, that I feed every day, uh, just about all of them, if they're outside for long enough, they'll develop cataracts because of the sun. And... Uh, that Hawaiian sun is very strong, very powerful, and those cats are outside 24-7, so the uh, most of them uh, develop vision issues, so if once after a few years, they can hardly see. Um, also, Heidi was having problems with a security guard over there, uh, some guy from Nigeria, I believe, and he was just kept on chasing her around, but he would sometimes feed her scraps and stuff. But Heidi uh, had was all the way a couple blocks away, and she heard about my feeding, and I would hear Heidi blocks away crying, uh, but she couldn't find my feeding. And so I would go a little bit closer each day and just get her closer and closer to where I feed the other cats. And finally, one day, I just brought her inside, and she was very happy and very content to being inside. She had the whole bedroom to herself uh, for the majority of time, and she was very happy Um having a human and somebody care about her. She's a very loving cat. Uh, I was just unfortunate. She had to spend so much time on the street and um, I wish I could have uh, given her more care, given her better care, but uh, I'm doing everything that I can. I have two arms and two legs and I wake up at 3 a.m. every single day for four years uh, taking care of these cats. I've spent thousands of dollars of my own money. I wish I had more money and I would spend it on taking care of these cats. There's 2 million homeless cats in Hawaii, and there's only 1 million residents in Hawaii. So even if everybody took in two cats, there still would be um, plenty left over. <clears throat> All right, game one of the NBA Finals. Now, with betting on basketball, one trick that I've done in the past is 
you try to predict what you think the line is going to be. So without looking at the line first, and tonight's game, you have Miami at Denver. Denver probably has the best starting lineup in the NBA. They have one of the best players in the NBA. Uh, Miami was an eight seed, and they weren't supposed to be here. They're on borrowed time. They're on house money. Uh, with that being said, Miami has been proving people wrong throughout the playoffs, and they've been covering the spread and also winning on the money line. So I figured Denver would be favored. It's at Denver. But I figured Denver would be favored by four or five points. And when I checked the line just before the podcast, I saw that Denver is favored by nine and a half points. And I couldn't believe it. So normally, if you see something like that in betting, you're like, what? It's not supposed to be that high. There's one of two things that could happen. You could be like, okay, well, they're wrong because I know that the the line should be way uh, less. So Miami at least will cover the spread even if they don't win the game. Or you could you could say maybe you were wrong to, altogether and you're like, wow, Denver is really good. I didn't know Denver was that good. Aaron Gordon, that he's good. Caldwell Pope, he's better than I thought. Uh, Michael, uh, not Michael Carter Williams, but um, uh so and so uh junior what i forget his name his dad was a, a coach he played basketball anyways i'll remember his name after this series so i think one or two things are going to happen denver is either going to blow out the heat and it's going to go over as far as the over under goes the combined total of both teams uh because it'll be a really high scoring game and denver will blow them out and cover the nine and a half point spread or Miami will prove everybody wrong and win the game. If Miami is going to lose in five games, this will be the game that they win. This is the game that they have the best chance of winning because Denver has been off for a couple weeks longer and Miami just played a few days ago. Miami is fresh. I think uh, Gabe Vincent's going to have another good game. It's, I think his performance in the Eastern Conference Finals are going to carry over into the NBA Finals. I think Jimmy Butler... He doesn't have anything to lose. He's already had the most, one of the most legendary playoff performances. And if he wins a championship, it will be without a doubt, the most legendary uh, in individual performance where they just kicked their game up another notch into the playoffs and they just won, won, won. So they've Jimmy Butler and the heat have taken out the number one seed Milwaukee Bucks, the number two seed Boston Celtics and uh, the number five seed New York Knicks. Uh, that was not an easy task, and they did it despite having injuries to one of their best players and Tyler Harrow. Um, so, they've been uh, proving people wrong forever. So, I wouldn't be surprised if they come in and they steal game one. That's the Heat's mentality tonight, is they want to steal game one. They want to go in there and shock everybody and steal game one. And they have nothing to lose. They're a, a great defensive team. Coach Eric Spoltra, he's one of the best defensive coaches in the NBA, and he knows how to change defense, and he knows how to play with a small lineup. Uh, even back with the big three in Miami Heat, he would uh, play Chris Bosh at the five and LeBron James at the four against the San Antonio Spurs, and I watched all of those games. Eric Spolster is a really good coach. Uh, so if the Heat do win, I'd also say the under for the over-under. The over-under, it's probably just under 200 points, probably. It's probably 190, 195. And I would say it would be another low-scoring game. The games that the Heat have won in the playoffs, they've all gone under. Game 7, uh, the, the Heat are a great defensive team, and they want to slow the game down. Denver, they want to play, uh, they want to put the heat out of breath. They want to run up in court. Uh, they have a great all-star point guard in Tyler Murray. And uh, he really, is, for the first time, has got the main stage. Not many people know about Murray and know how good he is. He's a great point guard. He's going to have a few great games in this series. And believe it or not, not many people have even seen Jokic play, despite winning two regular season MVPs. So I think they have that both going for them. Like I said, they, they have a great starting lineup uh, with Aaron Gordon, uh, formerly of the Orlando Magic, uh, one of the best leapers in the NBA. He's going to have some great dunks this series. 
And it's it's going to be interesting. If the Heat can win game one, that would be the best thing for the NBA because that would guarantee at least five games. And uh, in each, each of these NBA Finals games uh, make the NBA about a billion dollars. It's the first time since pre-2020 that people are watching the NBA, and it's one of the most exciting seasons. Um, either team, I'll be re- I'll be really happy for winning either Denver the Nuggets or the Miami Heat. I hope it's a good series. I hope it goes seven games. But picturing either team celebrating in the locker room, I'll be happy for the Denver Nuggets to finally win a champ an NBA basketball championship. But when I watch it, and my heart is really with the Miami Heat, I'm very much cheering for the Miami Heat, and they are huge underdogs in this series. If I had the money to bet, I would just bet on them to win it and win the whole series. I would bet on them to win game one. I would bet on them to win the first quarter in the first half of game one. And I would do that uh, because I'm cheering for them. This could be a moment in history when we don't even know how big it is, but if Jimmy Butler can win the NBA championship, you know, a player that averaged, you know, 22 points in the regular season, he was an all-star, but he wasn't, you know, a super, super all-star. Uh, but to make it in the world when it counts in the playoffs to take your game to that next level, uh, that's that's something uh, that everybody will always remember. So why not make it happen, Jimmy Butler? Do it for any anybody and everybody that used to have a, a rough time in their life and that had somebody tell them that they couldn't do something and that's you know surprise somebody. The one thing that every uh, people have always told me that I get more than anything when i'm working at a new job or a new group project or a, you know a group a study group in school and college or something and somebody doesn't know me from the outside they just know how i look they just see like broken glasses and funky outfit you know whatever style i'm banging at that time but uh then they they get to know me and we work on a project together or they listen to me and or they ha- have a conversation with me and then they're totally what, however they thought about me before, it's a total 360. And it's happened to me more than a dozen times where they somebody says, you know, Greg, you know, Gregory, you know, Mr. G, I, I'm sorry about wh- wh- how I thought about you when I first met you. And it's like, what, wait, what? what? How did you think about me? Did you think I was some asshole? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I just, I just, oh, never mind, never mind. And they can never own up to it. They can never just, Oh, I thought you were a fucking retarded piece of white trash. You know, it's less like, you know, <laughs> is is that what is that what I look like? You know, well, you know, the thing is, don't judge a book by its cover. But uh, I, I saw two construction workers today and I was listening to some like indie uh, rock band like Beach House or something and the construction workers or they were like gardeners and they were like working in the landscaping while I was waiting for the bus. And I'm just like listening to this and I'm like, these guys have never listened to this music and they don't know what the fuck I'm listening to and they don't really know or how or can appreciate it. And I'm I'm thinking about like a, a girl I dated in college and going to my bedroom and, you know, I'm all, like getting all deep. And uh, the, so sometimes you can judge a book by its cover, but that's coming from me, somebody who's misjudged over and over again. So I don't know. Uh, I come from a very strange background. Normally, people like me do not survive. Like, they've done studies, and I, to not tell you too much about myself, but they've done studies. They don't, they're not allowed to do these studies anymore on young babies where they'll take a mother away from the baby, and uh, they'll feed the baby, and they'll clothe the baby, and they'll, they'll give the baby food, uh, but they'll just keep the baby in a crib, and they won't give the baby any love or any attention. And what ends up happening is the child dies. Um, the child doesn't even make it to five or six years old uh, because that is one thing that every infant needs growing up. And if you don't get it, you end up like me. <laughs> or if you don't get enough, all right? <laughs> I must have gotten some. No, no, no. In my case, with me and my twin brother, um, our mother had custody until we were four. Our cold ass father did in custody until we're like five or six. And that's when we had to live in the gar- a closet in the garage, basically, a few years after that. So up until we were like four, our, you know, we did have a mother who cared for us. 
Uh, but then she developed schizophrenia, was locked in a mental hospital. Long story. And uh, we were uh, sent to live with our father. And uh, he, the only reason he wanted custody is because he didn't want to ever have to pay child support because he was so cheap. Uh, so the way that me, we grew up, I had to grow up fast. So I became an adult at like six years old. Me and my twin brother were riding the city bus at like six or seven years old. We were going to the mall by ourselves. We had to wash our own clothes. Uh, we had to only were given 25 cents a day for lunch. And uh, we had to learn how to do things on our own at a very young age. Um, I wasn't as good as a communicator as I am now when I was eight years old. And um we didn't really have anybody but each other. And um, it wasn't as easy for me to communicate or for me to learn. And I had, you know, yet to realize my intellect. I had yet to realize that I was a person uh, worth living. Uh, our dad told us every day growing up from as long as we can remember, as long as I can remember, he would say every day, you boys are nothing but a couple liars, cheats and sneaks liars cheats and sneaks and then i remember talking to my twin brother as an adult when we're like in our 30s and i just said it to him and i said it exactly the way our father would say it he's like you're nothing but a couple of liars cheats and sneaks and uh my brother just like cringed up for a second he's like dang i can't believe you remember and you can say it exactly how he said it you sounded just like him and i'm like yeah i know like that, that is a talent that I you know sometimes things just stick on my brain on an auditory level. And I remember studying for things in school uh, whenever I wanted to remember something in particular, a, a date or a, a name of a theory in college and a psychology course or something. I would just do a replay, rewind the tape in my head and put the instructor's voice in my head and have her, you know, tell me the answers from what I had previously heard. So, but yeah, uh, it's it's pretty uh, scary in Hawaii. They're letting people have uh, concealed firearms now. Um, I don't have a concealed firearm. At least I, I'm not telling you about it, but I do have these right here. These are officially uh, licensed pepper guns. And uh, we have number 4243 and number 2917. Uh, this one has the extended clip. And uh, this one is uh, just got a regular clip. Uh, they're CO2 powered and uh, you can have a ver variety of ammunition. Uh, and this one currently I have some uh, uh, in the extended clip, I have uh, 12 uh, uh, rubber uh, balls. Um, and then on the uh, regular uh, eight clip, I have uh, nerve gas, nerve gas. Pew, 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 pew. So, if the rubber balls don't work, pop, 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 pop. hey, buddy. What is nerve gas? It just makes me think of the Joker. Does it make you start laughing? <laughs> no, hopefully, praise God, I don't ever have to use them. And even though crime has been uh, bad, uh, people in this neighborhood know me well enough. I've been here four years. And I wear a costume, basically. Uh, they know me as the guy who feeds cats, and they usually leave me alone. I use them alone. I leave them alone, and they leave me alone. Unless, of course, they're selling me cat food, which, you know, I do buy cat food from street people. Because, hey, man, they got the best prices, inflation. What are you going to do? I just got a guy, Manny, over there. He got me uh, 12 cans, 50 cents a can. Bam. 50 cents a can in 2023. You can't beat that. With inflation nowadays, you cannot beat that. Thank you, Manny. If you're listening out there, Manny. You're my man, Manny. Aloha. Manny's a nice Filipino guy that I uh, enjoy uh, buying cat food from. All right. So today's podcast was brought to you by my twin brother's Smelly Gym Socks. You can find my twin brother's Smelly Gym Socks in the New England tri-state area, uh, most likely in some wooded uh, mildew basement. All right. Uh, with that being said, uh, I want I just want to mention how I've, I saw some ESPN anchors and other news anchors. They do like little uh, live show, not live, bro. they do little like 
Zoom calls with each other, and they post them on the on the ABC or ESPN uh, YouTube page. And so you have like these talking heads, like from their ap apartment or sometimes from their motel room, and like these NBA, like Brian Windhorst, and all these NBA people that are like supposedly like Mister Know It Alls. They know so much about basketball and football and baseball and sports, right? But they're doing their little podcast or their Zoom call, and they're uploading it on the the regular ESPN YouTube page, which has millions of followers. But it's done with a shitty camera, like the built-in camera from their their laptop, and they're not using a mic. They're using like the 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 laptop's mic. They're not using like an external microphone, and they don't ever have the camera at like eye level. They have it like pointing down, like. Or like way up here, usually like, hey, so I am Brian Windhorst. And it's just like, like what the fuck? Like how did the and the you know who's paying for their their cushy jobs? They're making like two hundred bucks an hour, so a, a crazy amount, and they don't even know how to do that. Like I'm a, I'm just started doing this for two weeks, but even I knew that in like a basic film course to keep the camera basically at eye level. And it seems like they make so many mistakes. Like they are making so much money. They're not using an external mic. They're making that much money and they're, they're not using an HD webcam. What the fuck is wrong with them? Why did they even get that job that they got? Oh, they're so special. They went to college. Okay. Really? They went to college. They, they, they graduated some from some four state university. You know what really pisses them off? Somebody like me. You know why? Because I'm more no knowledgeable about basketball or just as knowledgeable about sports and basketball. And I'm also more entertaining too. Oh yeah, but they went to some fancy school and blah, blah, blah. No, but you know what really pisses them off? The thing is that they have a bachelor's degree, most of them from some four-year university, but they're supposedly journalists. Do they have a bachelor's of journalism? Do they have a BJ? Because I got a BJ. I got a BJ from the University of Texas and BJs are pretty rare. Believe it or not, bachelors of journalism are very rare. Most schools do not <laughs> give BJs. There are only 20 schools in the United States, highly 20 universities, highly accredited enough to give BJs. And guess what, guys? The slacker with the broken glasses, he has a bachelor's of journalism, a BJ. Blah, 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 blah. I got a BJ, huh? And the thing is, none of those journalists, they're not even as educated as I am. They're not even as trained in journalism as I am. Maybe they have helped with books with all these editors and all that money and a, a bunch of upfront shit. But I wrote a book all by myself without an editor, without uh, anybody help, helping me. And it's a damn good book that's going to stand the test of time. So I'm just saying the 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 curtains coming up on all these motherfuckers. It's the local news was the first to be like, fuck you. You guys are stupid where nobody watches the local news. My cat videos have more views than most local news. And uh, people are realizing the same for everything. Like there, those videos don't have many views or many likes, despite being on the ESPN YouTube page or on the ESPN TikTok page. Why? Because they're crap. And people, if no, normal people like myself can make better produced content, then fuck them. What can they do? Those fucking dorky dudes. <laughs> ha ha, you can't do that. Huh? I can do that. You can't do that. I can do everything you could do, but I can do other things too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now that was pretty weird, but I was just making a point here, okay? Me being who I am, more entertaining than the fucking fat old fuckers, dumbasses with the fucking fuck fuckers, with the fucking talking heads. Do you think they know everything? That they get all the inside information? They're so entertaining. They're so funny. They're so smart. They're so educated as journalists. Well, motherfucker, I can see why you don't like Mr. G, huh? All right. The Mr. G podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcasts. Just Google Mr. G Podcast Hawaii. 
full episodes of the Mr. G podcast are immediately uploaded onto Twitter and to YouTube. Thank you for watching. Everybody have a great day. Go Heat.